change from the last game. Dominic Drakes comes into the side at the expense of Odin Smith and Deepak Huda for India to replace Ravindra Jadeja. We understand has an injury, so I reckon he's resting. Had that injury during the ODI series, so India being very careful with his fitness. <coughs> Brandon King with that fine innings uh, yesterday. Will be full of confidence. Set things up nicely in the run chase for the West Indies. And straight away, Deepak Huda with the ball. Afternoon to Ron Gavaska, who is alongside me. Wesson is taking the knee as customary. Good afternoon, DJ, and welcome to our viewers wherever you may be. Deepak Huda to start off proceedings for India. We've seen that in the past, he's quite economical. Again, he's one of those players who over the last year and a half has really come on leaps and bounds. Making a strong case for him to be in that World Cup squad. Little bit of drift in that first delivery. Have a look at this, just a little bit of drift. Quick single. Good legs, good legs. Left right combination at the top for the West Indies. Be interesting to see what Dipakura will do against the left handed Carl Mayers. Awesome. Again, Carl Mayers will be hitting with the wind to the leg. Any drift will be coming into the left hander. Well, signaling his intention straight away, Carl Mayers. Not hanging around. If it's in the slot, he's going to throw his bat at it. Well, drifting into Carl Mayer's couple of deliveries, uh, just peeling off the inside half of the bat. Well, and that's what you're going to see from Deepak Huda. Oh, he's coming round the wicket. <laughs> And he's coming around the wicket to Brandon King as well. And coming around the wicket, if you have got a slip and play, that means you're not going to turn it. It's going to go straight. And it's going to come into the left hander. It's not going to be much turn. Dot to end the over. Good first over by Huda. One without loss. Bhuvaneshwar Kumar with two overs in the last game. Rohit Sharma publicly stating that he went for Avish Khan to bowl the 20th over instead of the more experienced Bhuvaneshwar Kumar. 
Nice work. One-handed stop in that cover region. Buder again. Yeah, excellent work. Not just the one-handed stop, but the quick recovery, getting back in position and throwing the ball. Gets that stop, gets into position and releases. That's what you want. Putting the batters under pressure if they're trying to take a run. Quite a few interesting decisions made at the start of this game one. Nicholas Puran opting for a second left arm seamer, seeing the success that Obed McCoy achieved in the last game. Six for 17, best figures for Obed McCoy in T20 internationals by a West Indian. And again, when you look at the stats, when India bat, every 25 deliveries from a left arm seamer has picked up a wicket. Just short. Or did it carry? I thought that was an excellent effort from Arshdeep. Had to dive forward, never easy diving forward. It's again. Just fell short. Did well to get his hands in the right place. just qualify that statement since 2000 in T20 internationals every 25 deliveries bowled by a left arm seamer has uh, picked up a wicket 2020 a bigger pardon yeah I, look I know the numbers say that India struggle against the left armers but the today's uh, contest one change from the last game Dominic Drakes comes into the side at the expense of Odin Smith and Deepak Huda for India to replace Ravindra Jadeja we understand has an injury so I reckon he's resting had that injury during the ODI series, so India being very careful with his fitness. <coughs> Brandon King with that fine innings uh, yesterday will be full of confidence. Set things up nicely in the run chase for the West Indies. And straight away, Deepak Huda with the ball. Afternoon to Ron Gavaska, who is alongside me. Wesseney is taking the knee as customary. Good afternoon, DJ. And welcome to our viewers, wherever you may be. Deepak Huda to start of proceedings for India. We've seen that in the past, he's quite economical. Again, just one of those players who over the last year and a half has really come on leaps and bounds. Making a strong case for him to be in that World Cup squad. Little bit of drift in that first delivery. Have a look at this, just a little bit of drift. Quick single. Left-right combination at the top for the West Indies. Be interesting to see what Deepak Huda will do against the left-handed Carl Mayers. Again, Carl Mayers will be hitting with the wind to the leg. 
Any drift will be coming into the left-hander. Well, signaling his intention straight away, Calmez. Not hanging around. If it's in the slot, he's going to throw his bat at it. into Carl Mayer's couple of deliveries uh, just peeling off the inside half of the bat well and that's what you're going to see from Deepak Huda oh he's coming round the wicket uh, and he's coming round the wicket to Brandon King as well and coming round the wicket if you have got a slip and play that means you're not going to turn it it's going to go straight and it's going to come into the left-hander it's not going to be much turn. Dot to end the over. Good first over by Huda. One without loss. Bhuvaneshwar Kumar with two overs in the last game. Rohit Sharma publicly stating that he went for Avish Khan to bowl the 20th over instead of the more experienced Bhuvaneshwar Kumar. Nice work. One-handed stop in that cover region. Buddha again. Yeah, excellent work. Not just the one-handed stop, but the quick recovery, getting back in position and throwing the ball. Gets that stop, gets into position and releases. That's what you want. Putting the batters under pressure if they're trying to take a run. Quite a few interesting decisions made at the start of this game one. Nicholas Puran opting for a second left arm seamer, seeing the success that Obed McCoy achieved in the last game. Six for 17, best figures for Obed McCoy in T20 internationals by a West Indian. And again, when you look at the stats, when India bat, every 25 deliveries from a left arm seamer has picked up a wicket. Just short. Or did it carry? Well, I thought that was an excellent effort from Arshdeep. Had to dive forward. Never easy diving forward. It's again. Just fell short. Did well to get his hands in the right place. just qualify that statement since 2000 in T20 internationals every 25 deliveries bowled by a left arm seamer has uh, picked up a wicket 2020 a bigger pardon yeah I, look I know the numbers say that India struggle against the left armers but the point I'm trying to make is that most teams would most teams will struggle against the left armer who, when he's in rhythm, hitting the right areas, just the angle, the fact that he can shape it back in. 
And that's why every team's looking to get that left armor, that quality left armor in their side. First boundary. There was length on that delivery. Brandon King doesn't miss out. He's absolutely smashed that. Again, just got into position really quickly, did Brandon King. Beautiful shot. And it's a pitch that you can trust the bounce. There's no need for you to launch forward too early as a batter. Recovers well, Bhuvaneshwar Kumar. End of the second, seven without loss. Avish Khan for his first over, just one over spin from Dipakura from the Lozak Road end. Just losing his shape a bit, Carl Mears. Other interesting decision was that from Rohit Sharma at the toss, electing to bowl first. Possibly based on statistics at this ground, of the 11 T20 internationals, seven times teams have won chasing. Would that be the strongest rational behind his decision? I would say it would be one of the big, big factors. Nails it. That's a muscular shot from Carl Mears. Well, that's the correct word, muscular shot. He's powered that one bounce into the fence. That was just brute strength from Kyle Mears. He can really stand and deliver, no real footwork. Just got that front foot, transfer of weight, got the front foot out of the way and absolutely bludgeoned it. again whipped away and flies for six he wasn't happy with the one bounce force so he said listen you know what i'll do one better but this time over the rope he got the elevation right got the timing right ten of the over already Margin for error is so slim on this pitch with uh, small square boundaries. Couple of runs. Got very tight in the end. Yeah, scamper through for the second, but. Just got a little bit tighter than you'd have expected. But just come back to your question about winning the toss and bowling first. I think one of the big factors would have been the fact that teams chasing a one more often than not. I think another factor would be sometimes if you're batting first on a ground like this where the pitch is not as flat as you expect but the ground is small and it's a six hitting ground here you could be a little confused as to what kind of target you want to set 160 170 would be a good score but sometimes you think okay looking at the ground dimensions i need to get to 190 because this is a 
this is a a six hitting ground and that can lead to your downfall so, so it could be better to have a target in front of you knowing how to approach the innings rather than setting a target runs flowing in the over 15 from it 22 without loss Solid start for the West Indies with the bat. Again, capitalizing on the hard new ball, piece on the ball. Many of the runs coming square off the wicket. Evidence of the length chosen by the Indian bowlers. Moving into second. Well, there's that length again that you spoke about. Short. Dug into the pitch. And that's also because from what was seen in yesterday's game and the bounce, that extra bounce that the West Indian bowlers got initially, you spoke about it earlier in, in, in the pre-match show that there was a bit of bounce which is there to be exploited, and that's what the Indian bowlers are trying to do. Low strike rate uh, to off-break bowlers. Oh, beautiful. Stunning piece of innovation from Carl Mears. He gave himself room to leg to find the gap offside. Well, and the timing was exquisite. We spoke about his power in the previous over. This was all timing, all finesse. And he held that pose for a little while as well because he knew he'd found the gap. He knew it was four. So important to adjust and adapt to the conditions as an opening pair. Looks very much attuned to the conditions now, Carl Mayers. He scratched around in that second game here at Warner Park. Yesterday, evidence of the bounce, the extra bounce. That was Sri Asaya cutting under the bounce. Rich Sharma again couldn't negotiate the first delivery from Obed McCoy. Led to his demise. Nifty, very nifty from Kyle Mayers, a deft touch. Yeah, clever shot. Didn't try to hit it too hard, knew exactly where the shot third fielder was, focused on placement. And just the timing again, excellent. Very different innings yesterday. Palmeiras got eight from 14 balls already, 23 from 13. It's attempting that ramp shot. There is a stifled appeal. Rishabh Punt is quite convinced that there was something on that shot, and the review is taken. television director we have a player review for caught behind I've already checked the front foot it's a fair delivery the original decision is not out can you move to front on please front on coming up 
the ball is quite close to the glove. I'll need Ultra Edge to confirm if there's any glove or bat involved. Ultra Edge coming up. If there's a flat line, keep going. Flat line as the ball passes the gloves. Keep rolling, keep rolling all the way through. Yeah, there is no spike on Ultra Edge. There's a flat line. I'm ready to go back on field to Nigel. Nigel, I'm going to ask that you stay with your original not out decision. You're on screen. Signal now. Review lost by India. That conviction from Rishabh Pant paying a heavy price. Again, Hawkeye has confirmed just about five centimeter more bounce than average experience yesterday. End of the fourth, 32 without loss. Hardik Pandya, the new bowler in this the first power play. Yesterday, Roy Sharma used uh, two overs of spin, one from Jadeja, one from Ashwin. Bhuvaneshwar and Ashdeep Singh both bowl two overs apiece. So a slightly different strategy deployed today. Pandya getting the chance to bowl in this first power play. Wants to be very precise with his field. Strong offside field. All fielders in that 30 yard circle. There he goes, Pandya. Two deep fielders, leg side for Brandon King. Possibly be the same for Carl Mayers, protecting his ability to hit in. Leg side with the win. Those two fielders don't really matter. Carl Mears and his power on show. Well, if he's going to strike it like that, those two fielders will be mere spectators. But you can see the thinking was right. You've got the fielders in the right play because you know Kyle Mars is going to target that area. But just again, struck it so cleanly. And this has been an excellent start from Mayers. 29 of 16. Quick and well-directed bouncer from Hardik Pandya. change in that fielder behind square Hardik Pandya pushing him a little bit finer
Well, they've got to be really happy with the start, West Indies. 40 without loss, 4.4 was done. And just the way that Mayers is batting at the moment, 29 of 18. King playing second fiddle at the moment, 10 of 10. And making sure the inform Mayers, when I say inform, inform for the day, on the day, getting more of the strike. That's what a partnership is all about. Realizing that your partner's batting better at the moment, give him the strike. There. Just a single. Again, doing the right thing, try to get him the strike. In a normal T20 game, I want to say a normal T20 game, we speak about this pitch on a pitch which is which you think is is a flat pitch you want both your players to go hard from both ends but on this pitch if you've got a player striking it well you want to give him as many opportunities as you can while one maybe just well not anchors the inning but bats through and i think that's the role that king has got mayers has got the role of going hard in the power play yeah very good points that is strike rate. You'll want to get that close to 140. Brandon King, end of the fifth, 41 without loss. Forty-one without loss, the West Indies in five overs. Momentum with them after having won the second T20 International yesterday. Looking to replicate that performance, that result. Ashdeep Singh into the attack. And it's only a small sample size in international cricket, Darren Sami, but his economy of 5.91, bowling some difficult overs in the power play, and particularly at the death. Yes, he got really good control, as we've seen him throughout the series. And these conditions here in Warner Park will also assist him. West Indies, good start. Brendan King, 50 last match. A swing and a miss from Brandon King. What we've seen in the early exchanges in this third T20 international is the difference in length from the Indian seamers. In that second T20, 7.65. They've bowled a little bit shorter this time around. And we mentioned yesterday in previewing these games here at Warner Park, that length, that 68 meter length has been quite difficult to strike in the power playovers with the new hard ball. West Indies exploited that quite well. And India now are trying to do the same to pull things back. It's often the surface dictates how you operate and that six to eight meter line length with pace on or off is the way to go yeah around the wicket from ashdeep singh and comes almost hidden only exposes himself at a very late stage so the batsman the right-handed batsman doesn't get a sighter normally you look at the ball at the start of his run-up and that sort of allows you to set yourself he doesn't give you that opportunity yes and normally you build a, a rhythm with him running in but if you see brendan king will only see him probably four or five delivery strides 
before he bowls. Just have a look, he's hiding, and now he comes out. Straight down the ground for Brandon King. That's a sublime stroke, regal from the King. Ashdip searching for another Yorker. Did not get it right. Easiest of shots for Brendan King. Interesting. Back to back Yorkers from Ashdip. He normally mixes it up very well with his length on line. The end of the power play. West Indies ended yesterday 46 without loss. Today, 45 without loss after six. Puran Hitmeyer slotted in at three and four. Just confirmation of that first power play <laughs> ending. Western is setting up themselves with a nice solid base. Wickets in hand. Abhijanjan Ashwin, the new bowler for India. Very experienced campaigner. Been looking to get the breaks, which is a good matchup for him. Bowling to the left handed Carl Mears. Carl Mears has shown deficiency against Offspin. Saw him in that Bangladesh series, been out quite a number of times to write him Offspin. Well, Offspin or not, if you bowl him there, you're going to travel. Definitely get punished. Very full from Ashwin. Right in the slot. Could see Kyle Mayer's eyes opening up. Fifty up for the West Indies. A really good batting from them. The third 50 plus partnership between these two in 10 innings. So three times they've gone past 50 in only 10 innings. So this is a good partnership forging. And I want to see this partnership all the way through in the lead up to that T20 World Cup. And even there, really elegant from Brandon King. This is a shot of a man in form, a class shot. Such good timing. Opening up and just placing it. Lush green outfield here at Warner Park. Wait. Decides to go leg side this time. King adjusted his length. Much slower as well from Ravi Ashwin. It always almost seems as West Indies know how difficult it is to hit the paces on this surface. And Ashwin in his first over, they've not letting him settle down. Great yeah. Sharma still persisting with the slip, knowing that Kyle Mayers, probably Ashwin might slow up a delivery from outside the off-stump. Expensive start for Ravi Chandran Ashwin. 11 runs coming from that over, seven gone, 56 without loss.
West Indies scoring currently at eight runs and over. And if they continue that, they'll get to 160, something Darren Sammy spoke about as a minimum, given the prevailing conditions here at Warner. Pandya. In the air, will fall safely. But this is the phase of the game that West Indies will want to improve upon. The power play, they've done well. Scored boundaries freely. Most importantly, they haven't lost a wicket. Calmias, in particular, has been quite brutal. Getting himself four fours and two sixes. Brandon King, three fours in innings so far. And they've done it relatively comfortably. Clean them up. Hardik Pandya sends the leg stump for a walk. First wicket for India. His 50th T20 international wicket for India. What a star he's been. Brendan King just losing his shape here for a minute. Slower ball. Inside edge. Trying to hit it. If the breeze. He goes for a runner ball 20. West Indies lose the first wicket for 57. Nicholas Puran, West Indian captain, makes his way out to the middle. 950s in T20 internationals. Has a fantastic record against India. Brandon King just trying to continue the momentum throughout the middle overs, trying to heave this one. As Darren Sami mentioned, losing his shape, trying to hit it perhaps with too much power. Not absolutely needed at this venue. Inside the edge, ricocheting onto the stump. So a needed breakthrough for India. From a West Indian standpoint, it's nice to see that Nicholas Puran is taking this responsibility. Gets off the mark immediately. A pivotal batting position, number three. We often hear the best batsmen in the team should bat the bulk of the overs. Nicholas Puran, he's one of them. Could be very dangerous if he bats overs here in the middle. We have Shimran Hetmeyer, Hetmeyer to come back. Devon Thomas, Ravman Powell. They. Batting on the back of a good start from the openers. They have to capitalize on that. Yeah, and I just wonder. <laughs> Chance for a run out at the bowler's end. A direct hit, and he would have been gone for sure. There was even the possibility that Hardik Pandey himself could have come back and still effect the run out. He was so far out. Let's have a look. Kalmiers, nowhere in the picture. Hardik Pandya looking on. Could have come back, collected, and still made the run out. One of the basic things the coach always say, get back to the stamps. An opportunity missed here by India. But you could see the urgency Puran brings to the crease. Yeah, one of our producers. That's one of his pet peeves, when bowlers don't get back to the stumps. Just like what we just saw there. And I was just wondering whether that fall of Brandon King would affect the way Kalmiers bats. 
for the next couple overs or so. You have to be careful, the West Indies, in terms of their approach in this phase and how many balls they use and how much that run rate drops. Doesn't get the gap, but gets the single. And a risky shot, gets away. Eight overs gone, 61 for one. Good opening partnership and broken by Harry Pandey. Ashwin will continue. Yeah, Two left handed batsmen at the crease. And so that he'll be a little more comfortable bowling against these two. Has got Nicholas Puran dismissed twice in the previous two games, Ravi Chandran Ashwin. The way he varies his pace, and if it's not easy to come down the wicket to him. Yeah, I expect that Puran will be very cautious and watchful because of those two previous delivery dismissals. The first one at the Brown Arrow Cricket Academy and then yesterday trying to take him on to his demise. So that will be fresh in his mind and he wouldn't want a hat-trick of dismissals against the same bowler, particularly in this circumstance. You could see him using the depth of the crease. I think anything short, you would see Nicolas Puran looking to use the side of the breeze and play that shot arm pull he plays of the spinners. But for now, he's watchful. He knows the threat Ashwin poses. Three dots to Nicolas Puran. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he, he would mind this too much because of his six hitting ability and he can make up a little bit later. He doesn't want to try to take him on and get dismissed and lose another wicket. Such an important member of the batting group. So West Indies wouldn't mind this watchful period from him. Ah, Plena missed a very good over from Ravi Chandran Ashwin. Nine overs gone, 63 for one. A good solid start from the West Indies in the first nine overs. Only successful bowler so far for India. Pandya will continue. And you saw that happening yesterday when India batted first. 53 runs in the power play. Even though they lost a couple wickets, immediately once the field was spread, you saw the scoring becoming more difficult. It tells you that the older the ball gets, the harder it is to score. Yeah, just to underscore that, just 19 runs in the last 3.2 overs. 
So just about a runner ball in that phase, a phase that is historically affected the West Indies. The key is you have to understand the situation of the game. When to absorb pressure from the opposition. And once you've absorbed the pressure, got used of that surface. You need to decide when you're going to put back that pressure on the opposition. And at the moment, the momentum is with India. But Kyle Mayers and co have, has to see it through. He's gotten a start. He's the one to make use of that start. Yeah, a swing and a miss. Trying to hit towards the bigger side and into the wind. Protection in the deep. So, isn't anyone on the offside, square, on the boundary? Third man in the inner circle, no sweeper. So, he's only got a long off as a boundary ride on the offside. Maybe he can utilize that, give himself some room. I'm just thinking about possibilities. And Hadik Pandey would like bowl into these two left-handers. As you could see, he's dropped back the fine leg, the foot man shot, sorry, and brought the meat off into the circle. And he's using that six to eight meter length at the moment he's rolling his fingers bowling his cutters making it very difficult for Kyle Mayers to swing through the line of the ball and because of the strong breeze blowing across he don't mind bowling shot into the wicket Nicholas Puran just had a word with Kyle, probably telling him, dig deep, you get a start. Again, Hadik Panda is messing with the field. Foot man comes into the circle, long off goes back. Yeah, another player miss, another slow ball into the surface, and another attempt to hit towards the own side. Yeah, it's, I think it's instinctive. As batters, once you see the ball shot, you want to pull it. But Pandya is using this surface to his advantage. No one on sweeping on the offside. Probably Kyle Mayers could stay leg side of the ball and try to activate that offside. And he will be hitting with the breeze because there's wheat for an offer. Yeah, followed him this time. Hardik Pandya, an excellent over. Another excellent over from India. Halfway stage off the innings. 65 for one, the West Indies, and it's time for the Blue Waters drinks break.
Halfway stage of the inning, 65 for one. What we've also enjoyed on this beautiful island is uh, the beauty of the beaches. Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, island country in the West Indies, located in the Leeward Islands, change of the Lesser Antilles, smallest sovereign state in the Western Hemisphere. And there are lots of delights on the island into the cuisine available here. Lots of eco-adventure. If you're a tourist, you can enjoy the beaches, the heritage sites, Brimstone Hill. One of particular interest if you visit here. Nice little phase of the innings uh, for India with the ball. Last two overs only producing two runs each. Ashwin. Quite good in his last over again. Sustaining pressure. Was that put down? It was a sharp chance. It was an extremely sharp chance. Went quickly to Roy Sharma. That first slip. I think he saved a few runs there, fell short. Eventually, Nicholas Puran frees himself, gets a boundary. His first in his innings. Yeah, pulls out the reverse sweep, does Nicholas Puran. Just going in no man's land. This was uh, the sharp chance a couple deliveries ago. Just hanging back, Nicholas Puran. Nope, dropping short. Good response from Rohit Sharma. Well, even they have pulled it back nicely after that first wicket. First wicket fell at 57, 7.2 overs. And now 10.5 overs, 70. So they've kept it tight. The build pressure. Six runs from the over. Eleven gone, seventy one for one. This is where it's so crucial for batters to understand the situation, to play the situation well. The general trend that we see at Warner Park during those middle phase, run scoring becomes very difficult, very challenging with the ball getting older, the pitch drying out. Remember, it's the same pitch being used in less than 24 hours, although it's demanding for the players, for the pitch as well. There will be a significant amount of wear and tear, so that has to be taken into consideration. Yeah, and that's why I think the festival is getting about 150. 155, that'll be a competitive score. Another play and a miss. Significant factors as a batsman in this phase has to be about the lowering of bounce can't expect to hit square with ease and the ease that we score we saw from Kyle Mayers and Brandon King need to also try and look for singles rotate strike not only think about the boundaries 
Those are crucial elements to ensure that you score at above a runner ball in these nine overs through the middle phase of the innings. Then, of course, target your bowlers for boundaries. Yeah, I think that's key. Target your bowlers, pick your bowlers. Who are going to be your boundary? Who are you going to take a chance against and try and hit the boundaries? There are certain bowlers you'll give respect and say, listen, you know, if we get six or seven of their overs, we'll take that. And there are certain bowlers you think, okay, listen, we've got to make up for those six, seven run overs. So we're going to target X, Y, Z. So have a game plan in mind. Pick your bowlers and go hard against them. Yes, yeah, spot on. Maybe Avish Khan might be one to target, given what we've seen from him. From a West Indian perspective, they would know that Nicholas Puran is aptly skilled to deal with this sort of situation. That's why he bats at number three. Hetmeyer as well will relish the opportunity to bat in the circumstances. They're able to rotate strike. They can hit a long ball. So if you're off your mark as a bowler, they can easily score it over a runner ball. Yes, yeah, so it's just stalled a bit. Continues to look for that four ball all the time. When at times he should be balancing his game with rotating strike. Nicely placed. Didn't have to do a lot. Carl Mears was the angle of the bat that was in the right position to get him this boundary. Yeah, and they needed that boundary to West Indies. Was an excellent over up until then. Just one run coming off it. Just to confirm the point I was making, Carl Mears already consuming 15 dot deliveries out of 34. Nearly 50% of the ball's face. Uh. 77 for one. Word plus one. One up. Minute. Which team will take the ascendancy in the series? It's tied at one apiece. Of course, today, one team will go forward with an additional win and then two other matches to follow in this five-match T20 International Series. Nine wickets in hand, eight overs remaining. You've got to take a chance. You've got to be aggressive now. The chances of you getting bowled out are, are slim. Guile from Ashwin once again. Suffocating Kyle Mayers. The first delivery was flighted wide outside the offsome. Second one with more pace. Wicket to wicket. 50 up for Kyle Mayers. It was a slower delivery that offered him the time to rock back and pick his spot leg side. Hit with the wind as well. Yeah, that was a biggie. Monster hit from Kyle Mayers. Again, just dragging it a little bit short. Ravi Chandran Ashwin. And Mayers was quick to seize upon it. Okay, okay. 
Second 15 T20 internationals for Kyle Mayers. Three sixes. Of course, his first 50 came in the last series against Bangladesh, right here in the Caribbean. Pace 96 kilometers per hour. Previous delivery that was struck for 677. So no time for Kyle Mayers on that occasion. When you have a player taking so much strike in an over, it just stymies the partnership and the rhythm between the two batters out in the middle. Pura not getting strike in that over. Seven runs from it, 84 for one. Slight uh, improvement in the scoring rate by the West Indies in the last three overs. Havish Khan returns. This might just be the over that they target. What do you reckon, Ron Gavaska? Well, I think, they, I think they've got to target him. Simply because he will be under pressure. This is an excellent innings from Kyle Mears. An aggressive from word go. Looked to be in great touch. There was power, there was finesse. There was some cheeky shots. Played all around the park. Three sixes in that innings. Definitely missed out on that occasion, Kyle Mayers. Uh, his strike rate just dropping a bit in the middle phase as against the first power play. But evidence of his uh, strength, leg side in this particular innings. He's also very good offside. Well, again, just in terms of who to target, Avesh Khan in this game, because as we said, he'll be under pressure. He, as a player, would be disappointed with that last over he bowled, especially the no ball. Not so much, you know, you can concede 10, 12, 14, 16, 20 runs. But the fact that he bowled a no ball and gave a, gave a free hit, he'll be disappointed with that. And then went for 15 in the first over that he bowled. And in this over, wide and now a boundary. So he's under pressure. He's up against... Uh a quality T20 international player, Nicholas Puran, who will know exactly what to do in the situation. There is a bit of making up to do because of how good Ashwin and Hardik Pandey has been in the middle phase of the innings. More pressure for Avish Khan. What's he thinking now? Might go leg side, invite Puran to hit against the wind. Forget the evolution of the game, Darren. Like, there was a phase in one day cricket where your best player best fielder would be at point in t20 really your best fielders are boundary riders yes. 
gone through and just gets there. Career best score now for Calmez. A little bit of cat and mouse uh, game from him. Movement before release of the delivery. And he gets the right result. He yeah, just squeezed it through that gap between shot third and point. Eleven of the over. It's been an expensive over. Up and away. Very smart from Kyle Mez. Just waited on it to get it over the 30 yard circle. No boundary rider on the offside for that delivery. And once that was pitch shot, that was always going to be easy runs for a player of Mayer's ability and the fact that he's set batting on 61. Comes back nicely with a dot delivery to end the over, but already 15 conceded yet again from this Avish Khan over. 99 for one. Hardik was very economical, brilliant in the power play for the first time in the series. We saw him bowl in that phase. One for 19, Ashwin, economical. You'd expect Bhuvaneshwar Kumar to finish his two. Ashdeep as well, with three overs remaining. Rich Sharma will have to find one further over from someone, Ida Huda. Oh, will he go back to Avish Khan? Well, Kuda has gone for just one run in that first over he bowled in the power play. So I think it might be Huda that Rohit turns to. Or the other thing would be, he might be thinking again, listen, you know, Avish has had a, had a rough couple of days yesterday. And he's gone for runs today. Maybe a vote of confidence from him saying, listen, don't worry, have another over. Bowl that the just, 20th? No, but not bowl the 20th, maybe sometime in between. But just give him that vote of confidence and listen, don't worry about it. We know we're sticking to our process. You've gone for 13-2, but don't worry, we've got your back. We've got you. Just give that youngster that little bit of extra confidence saying my captain's got my back slapped and should go all the way yep Puran got it off the middle of the bat and usually when that happens it goes over the boundary line yeah again the length just slightly short. And he absolutely hammered that. 100 comes up. Piece off the ball again, proving to be difficult. Should land safely. And will allow for a couple runs. Brings up the 50 partnership between these two. Got away on that occasion, Nicholas Puran. But again, evidence of the challenge of batting deep in the innings on this pitch with an older ball.
the second T20 international when India batted first. They only got 29 runs off the last five. Of course, some of that was the excellence from the West Indian bowlers. But of course, the pitch would have contributed toward that low scoring in that phase. Wicket for the experienced Bhuvaneshwar Kumar. Puran again trying to hit this one out the park. The little extra bounce doing very well. And the partnership comes to an end. Again, trying to play that full shot. Just a little extra bounce. Bhuvaneshwar Kumar wasn't shy to go short once again. And that paid dividends. Puran goes for 22. It's 100 cent for two. Right-handed Ravman Paul makes his way to the crease. And the reason he's at the crease is because India have just picked up the wicket of the West Indies captain, Nicholas Puran. A little bit of extra zip. Put an effort ball in that short pitch delivery. Timely wicket as far as India are concerned because that partnership just got to the 50 stage and you could see that Nicholas Puran was about to step on the gas, be a little bit more aggressive. Bhuvaneshwar Kumar investing a lot in slower deliveries, rolling his fingers across the seam, bowling into the pitch, trying to take pace off the ball and extract some extra bounce. Pace on delivery first up to Ravman Paul. Well, at the current rate, they get to 144. 8 and over, 148. 10 and over for the last 5 and 159. 8 wickets in hand. They'll be targeting somewhere between 150 and 160. Nine runs from the over. Ruffman Paul gets off the mark. With five overs left, the score one or eight for two. We're at two minutes. One eight for two, five overs remaining for the West Indies. Where can they end up? Wickets in hand, importantly. Well, they'll have to contend with three overs from this man, Ashdeep Singh. Very, very good at the death. Economy of 4.54. Four wickets in the death that's obscene those figures darren sammy pass score for you given the state of the game now 155 somewhere badger i'd like from this surface another Another 47 runs, remaining four overs. And you 
you would ask yourself why Rothman Powell ahead of Shimron Hetmeyer. You see, you see India bowlers bowling to two left handers and forcing them to hit one side of the wicket. Yeah, helped away by Carl Mears in the gap and just uses the angle of Ashdeep, uses the pace and gets himself another four. Just coming inside the line of this one. Only had to help Peter wrong. Much needed boundary for the West Indies. Yeah, very specific role that Ashdeep Singh has in this team. And that's why he can bowl those Yorkers at will. He has all of those variations. He bowled the sixth over today in the power play, the final over. And just have a look at the pace variations. Such a skillful bowler around the wicket to the right-hander and to be able to do that with regularity consistency and control is amazing i was just talking about the specificity of his role darren sammy 52 percent of all his deliveries well this is dispatched disdainfully by rothman powell a gentle full toss and well there she goes you could be going at 4.5 runs over in the depth you bowled this to Rothman powell this will happen missed his length just as samuel badger was bigging him up Rothman powell can be very destructive in this stage of the inning West Indies need to get to a target of 155 or more. They have the platform. They got the wickets in hand. Yeah, short final leg comes to straight mid-wicket. Another slow ball from Ashley. I was just talking about his specificity in this lineup. 52% of his deliveries in the power play. 48 percent at the death so he's never bowled in that middle phase he's been given that job power play and death to me those are the two crucial areas in t20 you set the game up in the power play and then you close it off in the death you have two or three bowlers in your squad that could do that you win in most of your games powerfully drilled just for a single 14 runs from the 16th over one two two for two West Indies will be hoping for a strong finish to this innings, a quiet middle phase for them. But this is where they've excelled historically under the leadership of Darren Sami. These final overs, they've scored quite healthily. Power players through the years, different personnel in this setup. Bhuvneshwar Kumar will be bowling his final over means that might turn to Ash Deep Road Sharma. Crashed. Gets height and once he gets that height with that wind, it will go. 
because of that breeze here, Darren Sammy. And that short straight boundary. Sky thought he had a chance. Mayers did not time this one. Amazing effort on the boundary. And normally, 24 balls left. West Indies would be looking for a minimum of four sixes. But this time, it should be taken. Rishabh Pan calls for it and completes the catch. Bhuvneshwar Kumar, after being slapped for six, gets his revenge. Again, using the surface, rolling his fingers on this one. Kyle Mayers threw the shot too early. Rashi Pant makes no mistake. Kyle Mayers goes for a well played 73. West Indies 128 for three. Shimron Hitmeyer, the new batsman for the West Indies, has performed this role with some authority for the Rajasthan Royals. Again, that slower ball from Bhubaneshwar Kumar and the length so crucial. Back of a length into the pitch. A relatively simple catch for Rishabh Pant. Ruffman Powell will be on strike. Ruffman Powell in T20 internationals this year. Remember that century against England in January at the Kensington Oval. Could he connect a few lusty blows here to get West Indies past that 155 that Darren Sammy keeps mentioning? Direct it and he's gone. Well, he missed. Needed to hit the stumps. And DK had a good sighter. Had some time. Yeah, he was gone for all money. Sherman Hetmeyer. A strike rate of 182 at the death in all T20s. That's simply phenomenal. He'll be hitting with the wind to his leg side. I don't think he's going to get it easy or on a platter from Bhuvneshwar. So experienced as well. I think he will either go wide or pull that off cutter. Similar delivery to that of Kyle Mayer. They're pushing hard for two. Yeah, just a look at his strike rate against the different types of bowlers. Off break, obviously, being his kryptonite all right, all right. but no off's been left ashwin's gone Puller still has one but i don't think we'll see him at this stage again the use of that slower ball and, and bovnishwa so experienced darren sammy the first ball and over he was hit for six just look at the length a little bit fuller maybe than he would have wanted and then the adjustment that resulted in the wicket that's the six you could see he had length on that one 
and the 6 to 8 meter length we speak about on this surface could see the ball gripping Kyle Mayers was through the shot way too early just a single 10 runs from that over 17 gone 132 for three It starts for the top three batsmen from the West Indies. Bhubaneshwar Kumar picked up a couple wickets. A little bit expensive. Ashwin economical in his four. Just a solitary over from Deepak Hoda, the first of the innings. And very expensive from Avish Khan. Hardik, well, he did his job. One for 19 from four. And Ashdeep has a couple overs remaining. One of which he'll be bowling now. Just a single high percentage of slower balls throughout the course of this innings. Any surprises there, Darren Sami? No surprises. The wicket dictates you got to change your pace. And that's smart cricket from Hetmeyer. With the right hander hitting with the breeze, just giving him the single and let Rovman Powell take the risk which is the matchup hitting with the breeze but Ashdeep has is proven to be very deceptive Rothman Powell looking for the maximum what they'll also be mindful of Darren is the fact that someone has to bowl the next over. Bhuvneshwar Kumar has completed his allocation, so has Hardik, so has Ashwin. So it might just be Avish Khan once again. So if they can get 10, 12 runs in this over, and then they can really target Avish Khan in that penultimate over, they can get past that 155, 160 mark. So it's something that they should be considering. <laughs> it changes up his pace and his length with such ease, Ashdeep Singh. I'm very impressed with this young man and the body of work that he's been able to produce in T20 internationals, in the infancy of his career, yes, also in the IPL. I think he understands the surface. He's bowled two balls to the left under, back of a length. The right under, he goes full and wide. He did get Powell out yesterday. Will it be full and wide again? Yeah, down the track, the fielder is quite straight, so it would only be one. But you can see him trying for that Yorker. This was him to Powell yesterday. And that was after setting the field like he was going to bowl a bouncer. Deceive Powell, but he's operating again on the fuller side. You expect a slower ball into the wicket to hit Meyer. Oh, a chance. Always difficult for a fast bowler in his follow through. Was a comfortable enough height and not too fast. 
but wasn't able to hold low on Ashdeep. There's no one to blame here, Samuel. Normally, the bowlers bowl, someone drops the catch, and you fuming. It's all Ashdeep. Four runs so far from this over. West Indies needs a boundary. Asdip looking to close it off. Well, he closes it off quite nicely. Just a single and just five runs in the over. The next over, they'll have to target. 18 gone, 137 for three. Partnerships at the start of the innings for the West Indies, 57, followed by 50. And the common denominator in both those two was Carl Mears. Avish Khan, as we suspected, once again given the responsibility at the closing stages of the innings. Very expensive so far. Just wonder how confident he is. So much of this game is based on confidence. Starts with a wide. You could understand his thinking. Don't want to bowl that ball too close to Hetmeyer. He's been expensive today on a surface that offers assi assistance to the Pacers. Two was a call immediately. Wanted it. Wasn't there. Might get it now. No, he doesn't. Four balls left. Earlier, I did mention West Indies. Normally, well, when we played, we would look for four sixes out of these 24 balls. So far, we've only gotten one. Good delivery. Fall couldn't get under. Two is the call. This time, Hetmeyer sends back Powell. West Indies finding it. Hard to find boundaries his last four overs. Statistician says it's been a runner ball. Last 11 balls. Can they get the ball over the fence? Yep, the last 11 runs have all been singles. Make that 12. Can't find the gap. This is the over that they would have been targeting. Hetmeyer in particular hitting with the wind to the leg side. But it's been good bowling from Avish Khan. Yesterday, if you remember, Darren Sami, he bowled that over. Got hit for a six, bowled that no ball. This one is a crucial one. And so far, he's delivering. He's been spot on. Again, that yoker length on the leg stamp. Not giving Rovman a chance to get under the ball. Two deliveries left. 
in this over. It's been singles, all the legal deliveries. Can Hetmeyer go across his thumbs? But this time, he connects on a mighty blow from Shemron Hetmeyer. Went across to the offside, gets the length, gets the distance, and gets the result. He went for the off cutter this time. But look at the length again. Easiest to hit on that surface. And Hetmeyer dispatches this one. In two of the four sixes, I asked for the last 24 balls. Yeah, he predicted the line, didn't he, Hetmeyer? <laughs> and again, the same result, bludgeoned over Long Horn. 150 comes up for the West Indies. An expensive over uh, yet again from average 17. 19 gone, 154 for three. Exactly what the West Indies needed and the penalty made over. A couple of lusty blows from Shemron at Maya targeting the shorter side and the straight short boundaries here at Warner Park. And getting that total past 150, 154 for three. Final over coming up from Ashdeep Singh. What a shot. Incredible from Ruffman Powell. Not a bad delivery, but almost shoveled it to the boundary. I don't know what to say. How did he get that ball behind square? Great eyes from Ruffman Powell. Great hands. Yeah, Darren, you're speechless, I can tell. Wonderful strike from Rothman Powell. To get the power through that shot, that angle, really good. And this time, creamed wide of long off. So consecutive boundaries to start the final over. Consecutive fours. In this over, but we had 6-6 six, six of Ashdip of Avesh last two balls. And 20 runs in the last four balls. Before that, it was 13 consecutive singles. This is why West Indies is so dangerous when they're on sound. And Ashdip who's been so well in the dead overs. He now finds himself under pressure. Last eight balls, 25 runs. Yep, a learning curve for the young man, certainly. Straight back over his head, does it have the legs? Almost a collision. Deepak Huda in the end, completes the catch. And redemption for Ashdeep gets the dangerous Ruffman Powell. Again, oh, he got away with that one. The length on offer. Devon Thomas quickly out in the middle.
had a really good game yesterday, winning it for the West Indies, being calm under pressure. Yeah, Ruffman Powell got 23 of just 14 deliveries. Did his job. Can hit Maya. Close this innings off nicely for the West Indies. Can they get to 170? And that's what he would be thinking. Third man, fine leg in the inner circle. Two fielders backward point in the circle as well. What length, what line will he be bowling? Ash deep. A short into the surface. Appeal from the bowler and wicket keeper. Nothing from the umpire. Might consider the review. I think that they've decided against it. Oh, yes, they've gone for the review. Division director, we have a player review for caught behind. I've already checked and established a fair delivery. The original decision is not out. Can you move on to front on, please? Front on coming up. There appears to be a gap between bat and ball. I'll need Ultra Edge to confirm if there's any bat or glove involved. Just waiting on Ultra Edge, Nigel. It's building. Still waiting on Ultra Edge, Nigel. Ultra Edge coming up. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. There's a spike there, but a big gap between bat and ball. There is no bat involved. Clear daylight between bat and ball. I'm ready to go back on field to Nigel. Nigel, I'm going to ask you to stay with your original not out decision. You're on screen signal now. Well, the not out decision is upheld. Clearly, no bat involved. Yeah. And that would be his one short ball as well. was a, a brave del delivery given the feel that he had third man fine leg in and what will he go to now will he search for that yorker like darren sammy has mentioned before if you miss your yorker at this venue you can travel yeah, into the pitch once again up in the air will fall safely once two goes for two and be well short and that will be the end of Shemron at Maya, but we'll just await confirmation. Angle, please. Ball is in the keeper's glove. Batsman well out of the frame. I'm ready to make my decision for the big screen. My decision is out. I repeat, out. Hetmeyer knew he was out. It's already off the pitch. He goes for 20. Weston is 163 for five. Yeah, good last over from Ashib so far. Just the nine runs conceded in five deliveries. Jason Holder, the new batsman for the West Indies, to face the final delivery of the innings. Final delivery coming up. Good again from Ashdeep. And just a single to end the 20 overs for the West Indies. And they will finish on 164 for five of their allotment in the third T20 International here at Warner Park. Good starts from the West Indies. A top order really laid the foundation for this eventual score. How good will this score be? Well, we find out in a few moments time when India have their chance to bat. But so many things that the West Indian bowlers could glean from the performance of the Indians in terms of the lines, the lengths and the paces which they will bowl. Brandon King 
a runner ball 20 from him, but Cal Mears got past that half century mark and made it count 73 or 50 and starts for Puran Powell and Hetmeyer. Powell and Hetmeyer in particular, their strike rates were quite good. But Huda only had that one over. Uvanishma Kumar did get wickets. Hardik Pandya, Ashdik Singh, and Ashwin all economical for India. Yeah, just 56 in the last five for the West Indies. A good start in the first six, 45 in the power play. But the middle phase, they were a little bit watchful, Nicholas Puran in particular. And then a little bit of a flurry at the end got them to that 164 for five. Just five extras in the innings. A disciplined effort from India. I'm sure they'll be pleased with that performance. It's up to their batsmen now to come and do the job for the team. The West Indian bowlers, well, they'll want to replicate that performance from yesterday. Kalmiers was really good in the third game. Got himself started with a couple boundaries and he was fluent throughout. Showed his proclivity to clear the ropes and the power that he has as well. And he made sure that this was a significant score. And speaking about Carl Mears, he's pitch side with Alex Jordan. He is indeed, and uh, a well-played 73 off 50 balls, including eight fours and four sixes. Calmeers, you guys are looking so comfortable at the top there, you and Brandon. He was the aggressor yesterday, you today. Uh, can you talk about that relationship? You seem to have a good understanding out there. Um, uh, it's just the team playing, you know. Sometimes they get off to a flyer, and then sometimes he does. So, you know, it's just for us to, to communicate and know when is who they and, and uh, what's not. So today was my day to be the aggressor, and I, and I just did it. Yeah, you sure did. And very, very good looking to watch lots of strokes. In the middle overs, you were slowed down there um, by Hardik Pandya and also Ravi Ashwin. Is it just their skill or is it playing a bit differently today? I think the wicket is much slower than yesterday. Obviously, credit to the bowlers still for utilizing the conditions. They thought they bowled well into the wicket, a lot of slow deliveries, which were, were, were hard to hit. Um, Ashwin, obviously, you know, he's a master at his craft. You know, so we just be careful against him and not give him the opportunity to take wickets and put us up on the back end. So um, I just tried to stay out of the wicket as long as possible and it worked out in the end. All right, Kyle, yesterday you all um, had to chase. Today you set the tone. What about that number, 164? I think it's a competitive total. You know, as I said, the wicket is getting slower. So I'm backing our bowlers to, to come up with a good bowling performance today again. All right, go well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alex Jordan. Competitive score, we'll find out shortly how competitive it is as India will require 165 to win this game and take a series lead. In the meantime, we'll take a short break and we'll have some analysis on the other side.
And welcome back to continued coverage of this third T20 International West Indies. Well, they were sent in by Rohit Sharma earlier today. And Brandon King and Kyle Mears got, got them off to a good start. Partnership of 57. Then Nicholas Puran himself got to start a good partnership there again with Kyle Mears, a partnership of 50. And then Rockman Powell and Sherman Admire just polished things off at the end to get them to a good total, a total of 164 of the allotment of 20. The bowling for India, well, Hardik Pandya, one for 19 from four. Ashdeep once again given the difficult overs, one for 33. Ashwin was good in his four, but Avish Khan, very expensive in three. And overall, a good performance from India with the ball. The target for India in this 30-20i, 165 to get from 120 at 8.25 and this would represent if they get there the highest successful run chase at this venue it's the second highest score at Warner Park in T20Is the highest score being 182 that England got in 2019 so with that said Ron Gavaska how straightforward is this going to be you're not straightforward at all but if there's a team that could chase this target down, that's India. Look at the firepower that India possesses. If Rohit Sharma gets going, if Surya Kumar Yadav gets going, get them off to a good start. Boy, we are in for some entertainment. And I think West Indies know that. And that's why you can see that huddle. They'll be emphasizing on the strategies they have in play. Yeah, the final instructions from the West Indians as they head out to the middle to defend this total. They'll be very happy with the performance, with the bat. As you mentioned, yeah. these two guys, Rohit and Sky, so dangerous. They can do some damage, particularly in the power play. And Rohit has that ability to bat a lot of the overs, as we would have seen in game one in the series dismiss of the very first delivery yesterday so he'd be looking to set that right and Nicholas Puran at the toss mentioned the challenges that they've had with left arm seamers and hence brought in to the team another left arm seamer in Dominic Drakes and it remains to be seen how and when he will be used but what a start yesterday for Obed McCoy. Can he replicate that today? Well, if he does, India in trouble. If he replicates that start, India in trouble. I have a feeling, though. Fingers crossed from an Indian fan's point of view that we might see some fireworks from these two. Yeah, the way they went about it in the power play yesterday was sensational. The highest run scorer in T20 Internationals, Rohit Sharma continue to add to that tally. Hopefully for him and his fans, he didn't add to it yesterday. And Surya Kumayada, look at that strike rate. A phenomenal strike rate, 176. Can you imagine that? The man of the moment yesterday, Six for 17, the best returns ever by a West Indian. In T20 Internationals, Obed McCoy. Well, he'll be opening the bowling once again. Let's play. A slip in position, short third, where he was caught yesterday with Sharma. First ball off the run chase. Gets off the mark immediately, Rohit Sharma.
Yeah, and good timing as well. we we'll be feeling a lot better after that. Surya Kumar Yadav, 63, on the back of his shirt. Will be interesting to see how he approaches this chase because, from what we know of Surya Kumar Yadav, he's the kind of batter who likes to go hard from ball one. Well, he's gone hard, and this will dribble into the boundary. Gets himself off the mark with a four, the first boundary of the innings for India. Yeah, that, that was easy peasy for someone of Surya's ability. Right in the slot, all he had to do was find the gap. Good little square drive to get off the mark. He might have just kept a little bit low that delivery. So we're seeing some variable bounds from the surface. And as you'd expect, it's the same surface from yesterday. So that's 40 overs yesterday because we went into that final over. And already seen 20 overs here today. But really a frenetic start from India in the power play. Lots of boundaries, sixes, the second most sixes for them in the power play overs. But they've lost wickets, they lost three in that phase. And in the early days of T20 cricket, Rohan, if you lost three wickets in the power play, more often than not, you're going to lose the game. But they aren't too bothered by that, based on what they've been saying. They want to go hard, they want to play a certain brand. And I honestly think that's the way forward. The brand of T20 cricket that they want to play, I think that's the way forward. And I think we'll see a lot more teams doing the same. What a shot. Really classy and risky from Surya Kumar Yadav. There's no one in world cricket that plays the on drive better than Surya Kumar Yadav. This was a flick of the wrist as he played it on the rise. Such a treat to the eyes. Good end to the over from Obed McCoy. Good start to the chase for India. Nine without loss. Alzari Joseph opening the bowling for the West Indies from the Lozak Road end. Decent returns in the second game. Remember, he made his debut in this format in game one for the West Indies. And he's helped away. Almost taken by Dominic Drakes. Always going to be a difficult catch in the end. Couldn't hold on. And Sharma gets a six. But what a stupendous effort there. And this is a shot that Rohit Sharma plays really well. Tried to grab it on the second attempt as well.
The exciting cricket all round. Super shot by Rohit Sharma. Super effort by Drakes. Yeah, he was hitting that into the wind, but because of the pace of Azari Joseph, had enough on it to just eclipse Dominic Drakes, who isn't a short man. Good effort from him. Mercedes would dearly like to get an early wicket, make an early strike in this chase. And that will race away for four. Inadvertent, not where he wanted it. But he'll take it, Rochama. Yeah, just to start that India would have wanted in trying to chase this total of 164 down. Rohit Sharma moved on to 11. Already three fours and a six in the nine deliveries that have been bowled so far. So that's four boundaries in nine balls. Well, I think India have realized that they've got to try and utilize the power play. They saw West Indies do that because as the ball gets older, it's going to get tougher. While it's still hard and new, try and try and score as many runs as you can. Yeah, the physio on. Not entirely sure what's happening with Rohit Sharma. It's been very hot. I can tell you that much. I had a stroll out in the middle a little bit earlier. And that sun is absolutely beaming down. So it might just be a case of dehydration. I'm not too sure. So I'll not speculate. But it seems as though he's leaving the field, Rohit Sharma. And I'm sure we'll get an update as to the exact reason quite imminently. This is when he advanced down the track and hit the four. He's looking for any cues as if to anything onto what happened. Can't get any cues from that. Of course, he was arrested for the one-day international leg of this tour. So when he came in for the T20s, Rohit Sharma just holding his back a little, so it might be something to do with that in any event the new batsman for india another opportunity for this man Shreyas Ayer, in this number three position hasn't yet been able to solidify it strike rate of 137 and there has been some discussion about whether or not he's ideally suited for this position but such a an elegant player when he's on the go Sri Asaya, captain the Delhi Capitals, captain the Kolkata Knight Riders. Had some really good performances in the one day internationals at the Queen's Park Oval. Straight away greeted with a short ball. And if there's one area that teams will target him, isn't that the short delivery? I played that quite well. Shreya Sayer got underneath it, no worries at all, but you're right. You will see a lot of teams targeting him with the short ball. In white ball cricket, though, I don't think that would be too much of a problem. A dot to end the second is 19 without loss. Captain Rohit Sharma 
retired Hurt in that last over. Had a six and a four. 11 ball five. Five ball 11 rather. McCoy will continue. Not called. Would have been very tight. Seen a, a difference in terms of the length from McCoy and Alzari Joseph. Alzari Joseph much shorter as compared to McCoy, who's a little bit fuller. But both of them sort of operating in that 68 meter length. The, the length that we've discussed as having success in the power play on the surface. Through the gap. Threaded through the gap by Surya Kumar Yadav. No chasing that. Yeah, again, just clever cricket. Just using the angle of the left armor. Dabbing it down. Third man knows there are two fielders. I just got to find the gap. Clever cricket. Beautiful cricket. Just goes to show you it's not all about power in T20 cricket. There's also precision, timing. Yeah, very surgical with that previous stroke. Not much of a gap between those two feelers, but found it perfectly. Yeah, we saw the two. Varying lengths from McCoy and Azari Joseph, so different plans from those two. And that second game, they forged a very good partnership. The batsmen not able to line them up. Another good delivery, full and fast from McCoy. And it's only good because it went through to the wicket keeper, it's also very brave. Third man in the circle. So any bit of bat there, the possibility exists of it flying to the boundary. Well, third man and fine leg in the circle. So, like you said, pretty brave to pitch it up. Shreyas a strike rate of 121 against left arm pace. Yeah, so straight away varying his length. McCoy, quiet start for Shreyas Aya. Really been a quiet tournament for him. Picked up a duck in the first game, Aya. And then in the second game, 10. So hasn't had the best of starts. Another opportunity here to make that right. Excellent from McCoy. Three overs gone, 25 without loss. Hundred and forty more required. And a much quieter start to the power play for India this time around. Still healthy in terms of the score, twenty six in the fourth. But comparatively speaking, from what we saw yesterday, it's a little bit slower. Two fielders in the deep for Alzari Joseph, deep backward square and fine leg. So you're expecting a straight line to begin with. But that's with 
and that's skillfully dispatched. Not for the first time we've seen the stroke from Sky. What a talented player. Well, again, just that little bit of wit on offer. And as you rightly said, Samuel, we've seen this from Surakumar Radov on quite a number of occasions, especially with the two fielders in the circle. When I say two fielders, shot third. And no third man, that's always going to be a safe shot. And that's what makes him so difficult to bowl to. Yes, you want to bowl those close, tight lines, but the minute you're marginally off, he can dispatch you. Third man in position for Shreyas Ayer. Almost. And Shreyas expected the short ball, gave himself some room, but almost spooned it to Shaman Atmaya. Yeah, I think as soon as Shreyas saw that that third man was pushed back, back on the fence, he was expecting that short pitch delivery. This is good from Azari. Well, this was that short pitch delivery to Shreyas Ayer. It was quite short, really dug it in. Was it too short? That's the question. He's off the ground and I think it's above his head. So, could have been a no ball. Eagle-eyed Ron Gavaska, nothing gets past you. Whipped away in the gap, one bounce. Ends the over with a four expensive one, 12 coming from it, four gone, 37 without loss. Well, 37 for without loss, beg your pardon. And just a reminder that Rod Sharma retired hurt. So this partnership is 18 from 14. And the new bowler for the West Indies, this man brought into this game, Dominic Drakes. As Nicholas Puran mentioned, because of his left-handedness, and the problems caused by left-handed bowlers to the Indian batsmen in the recent past. In T20 internationals, right, we've seen the likes of Bolt and Obed McCoy and Topley and these guys trouble the Indian batsmen, the right-handers in particular, because of that angle. Nicholas Puran trying to use that to his advantage here. Very much in the infancy of his career. Well, Dominic Drake's many people in the Caribbean would have remembered his heroics in that CPL 2021 final with the bat. And 
that would have been the last match that he would have played at Warner Park. So he's back on a ground that will have fun memories for him. Player of the match in that final and took the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots over the line in a game where for much of it seemed unlikely. And every time we bring that game up, Ron Gavaska, our colleague Darren Sami, well, yeah, he's not a happy man at all. He's listening next door, I'm sure. Well, Sami's not a happy chappy <laughs> when you bring that up. He just pulled out because his handkerchief, his towel fell off whilst he was running up. So that off put Shreyas Aya. Just there as a batsman, you're looking at the bowler quite intently and that just throws you off. He did the right thing. Might just have a rule being introduced, Rohan, that if that happens, it might be a no ball. We saw the rule with the, the bowler if he dislodges the bail accidentally in his run up. It's considered a no ball now. Powerfully driven, will get a boundary. And so the length too full on that occasion. Well, again, you spoke about the length and you're spot on. Doesn't matter what kind of a pitch you're playing on, a half volley is a half volley, and, and quality batsmen will punish you. Well, that's exactly what Suri Kumar Yadav's done. And again, deliberate from Surya Kumar Yadav over point. Finishes the over with consecutive boundaries. 12 runs off it, five gone, 49 without loss. High successful run chases here at Warner Park in St. Kitts. Uh, of course, uh, India will need to go past uh, that 147. Scored by the West Indies against Afghanistan. A greater challenge for India in this chase. So far, they've looked very much the part. 49 without loss as we approach the final over of the power play. Afternoon to you, Darren Sami. Good afternoon, Darren Ganga. Good afternoon to our viewers. India's game plan is to make sure they capitalize with that hard new ball with only two fielders outside the circle. Brings up the 50, that single for India. And as you saw with the West Indies team, as soon as the field was spread after the power play, it became very difficult with the older ball to score. It's easy with one man hit outside the field, hitting a, outside the ring, hitting against the 
the breeze. That'll be a wide from Jason Holder. But when they have two and three guys in that leg side area, and the bowlers are sticking to the plant, bowling that ball into the surface, scoring becomes very difficult. Just to confirm your point, 67% uh, of uh, attacking shots in this third match in the power play. Highest so far across the three matches from India with the bat. Very much aligned to what the captain Rich Sharma wants in their approach to playing T20 cricket. Being a part of the recent IPL, that's very much the way that these IPL teams play in the power playovers. Ultra attacking. Yeah, Darren, also what that does is if you get that great aggressive start in the power play, when you know after the power play where scoring becomes much more difficult, as you see the president of the West Indies Cricket Board, right off screen, Ricky Skerritt, it allows you outside the power play to consolidate a little longer Innovation. As we've often seen from Surya Kumar Yadav, getting inside the line, trying to use the pace to beat the set field. I think probably a brilliant piece of fielding we shall see from Kyle Mayers. Pretty tight. Still having a look, guys. It's very close. So he's outside the boundary here. I can't. Mark, I'm going to need that front on angle. This one probably is going to be much helpful, much more helpful. Foot's outside. Keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling. Foot's off the ground. There's no movement of the Toblerone, no movement of the Toblerone. Just rock and roll it for me, please, Mark. And zoom it as tight as possible. Foot's off the ground here. Ball in contact now. I can't conclusively say that that hand is touching the boundary. Mark, I'm going to go back on field. It's going to be runs, runs. Runs, runs. Athletic work from Carl Mayers. Saving a couple of runs. Power play coming to an end. 56 without loss. India 11, 
runs ahead at the end of the power play when compared to where the West Indies were. Hussein straight away with the ball. One thing you could expect from Akil Hussein is good economy. Constantly developing his reputation as a very economical bowler in T20 internationals. That's because of his very good control that he's shown over the course of his career. And he continues to develop. Yes, he always brings that control and stability for Nicolas Perrin. He's one that he could rely on to be economical. He also gets wickets in between. It's also noteworthy to mention that India in that second T20 international, when they batted, they got to 56, but they lost three wickets. So a vast improvement in terms of that wickets column. Of course, Richarma, retired hurt. Yes, and it's given them a platform. Ideally, you would have seen how they pulled back the run rate of the West Indies after the power play. So they went hard, didn't lose a wicket, and now they could just knock it around. Only a, a required strike rate of just on the nine required. Down, down, down. And that's what happened so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just two runs coming from Hussein's first Akin, over. Akin, so Akin, Akin. Good start, boy. Strike rate of just 117 to left arm spinners, Surya Kumar Yadav. So, will he better that? Already, a few dots being chalked up by Akil Hussein. Terrific over from Hussein in his first, just three runs from it. 59 without loss. Just over 100 more runs required. Full 10 wickets in hand for India. Not required rate, just around eight. So at the moment doing well, but it's this middle phase uh, that India hasn't really kicked on playing at Warner Park. Yesterday in that uh, second T20 international, they scored at under a runner ball in that phase of the innings. They'll feel pleased with their efforts in the power playovers. Uh, Obed McCoy doesn't usually concede boundaries when he bowls. Conceded three boundaries in his first two overs. That was a half chance. He did something special from Dominic Drakes. Richama had to leave the field. And Sky continued to flourish with the bat. This stage right now, this period of the game, that's where if you could 
Look for a runner ball. Odd boundaries in between. It could really set the game up for the latter stages. It's very difficult. With five men outside the circle and the bowlers operating and forcing you to hit the ball against the breeze, as Jason Holder will try to do right now. Oh, oh. Sky dipping that back leg, getting under this delivery and creaming it for four. Don't understand the thinking right now. Meet off, meet on is up in the circle. It tells you he's supposed to bowl that ball into the wicket, that eight to six meter length. Let's see if he adjusts. Into the win, into the win, and enough. 50 partnership comes up, but was there an opportunity for Brandon King? Was he too deep inside the outfield? If you look at Jason Holder's reaction, suggesting to him you should stay on the boundary. Ropes. Lots of space at the back. But I could understand King trying to prevent the twos. An opportunity probably missed. Jason Holder. Now making an adjustment to the field. Third man comes into the circle. He's stressing, stressing. Stay on the ropes. <laughs> Wide ball. Brandon King really between a rock and a hard place because as a fielder in the deep when you're feeling with a batter hitting into the wind you're thinking about uh, that ball just hanging and giving yourself less distance to travel in to complete a catch also with the acreage to the leg side if he's a little bit in allows him to prevent a second run but at the same time if you get too far in, you can miss an opportunity, as we just saw in that fourth delivery of Jason Holder's over. It's just hard to please the bowlers. Yesterday, all the fielders, all the catches taken, the fielders were in from the boundary ropes. Sky just timed this one really well. Sure. If this ball is knocked into the infield and they run two, he will tell him, come in. Not the case, but an expensive over from Jason Holder. 15 runs coming from it, 74 without loss. Richarma retired hurt earlier on. We understand from the Indian physio that he had to leave because of a back spasm. We'll hope that the Indian captain will be okay. Maybe to continue batting later on. And for the rest of this uh, tour. Indian fans might be saying they might not need him with this platform set. 75 without loss into the ninth. It's 
swept well. Just had to get the elevation, Surya Kumar Yadav. He is understanding the conditions here at Warner Park. Brings up his 50. Just off 26 balls. His fifth T28. 50. To complement that with 100 against England. West Indies, total opposite of yesterday. This is where they put the stronghold on India, this passage of play. So far, it's not been the case. 15 runs from Jason Holder's previous over. It's already seven from two deliveries from Akil Hussain. India. Keep coming, buddy. Keep coming, Akil. Not making making the wrong with this run chase. Well, he's flattered to deceive on tour before this inning, Surya Kumar Yadav. This is his first half century on tour. Played in the ODIs. Didn't get to that landmark. But he's such a good player that you know over time. And with time out in the middle, he will convert. He will produce with the bat. That is exactly what he's done today. Not convinced the umpire. There's possibly a bit of pad on the way through to the wicket keeper, Devon Thomas. Seems not quite sure how to dictate what's happening out there. Is it not so good bowling from the West Indies or has the wicket gotten better? Maybe the limbs are not as great as it was in the previous game. We'll talk about that in the next over. End of the ninth, 83 without loss. All bowlers, with the exception of Obed McCoy, going at uh, over 10. That's a seam options. Kil Hussain with two overs, going at six. Nicholas Peroni struggled with that fifth bowler. One change today for the West Indies. Dominic Drakes replacing Odin Smith. Just to continue that conversation you started about West Indian bowlers. They haven't been able to contain this man. He has been crucial in terms of uh, the run rate that India has achieved in the innings so far. Conventional strokes. And he's not afraid to innovate as well with his ramps and scoops. And he has the awareness as to where the gaps are. So an informed batsman. Placing more pressure on the West Indian bowlers as a collective. Leg side, that's been his preferred scoring area. But he can equally score fluently through the offside. Dear, oh dear, my goodness, what a shot. That was on the up and he held his pose as well. My goodness. 
Hoffman Powell played a shot and I was left speechless. Look at that. What did Azari Joseph do wrong here, Ganga? Back of a length. Hitting the deck hard. My goodness. It's the nature of the modern game. Good deliveries are punished. The other thing and that shot highlights is how good this pitch still is for batting. Yeah, I ask you the question. Because the way India is chasing down that target. We're still this struggle after the power play once the ball got a touch older. Now you see in India accelerating after the power play. Is that an indication that Roy Sharma made the right decision at the toss? I think it's an indication that the West Indian bowlers, they've not followed what we saw from Bhuvaneshwar Kumar. His approach to bowling at Warner Park today, to me, is a perfect template for fast bowlers. Two for 35 from four, especially when Carl Mears was on the attack. That's a brilliant effort. <laughs> Ganga. <laughs> What a shot! We witnessing some amazing cricket from these Indian batters. Sheer brilliance from Surya Kumar Yadav. Showing his flexibility, his hand eye coordination, and skill. Played it to perfection. A boundary to end the over at the halfway stage of the innings. 96 without loss, and it's a Blue Waters drinks break. West Indies in a huddle out in the middle but we're here in St. Kitts the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis really a remarkable place to visit if you're a tourist if you're you know, from outside these parts so many things to do so many sites to see activities water activities inland activities as well historical forts wonderful resorts lots of flora and fauna 
So if you have that opportunity, do make your way to St. Kitts and Nevis. West Indies, well, they got to 164 for five in their 20. India at the halfway stage of their allotment, 96 without loss. And this partnership with 77 for 50 to a reminder, Rohit Sharma, the captain, retired hurt on 11 from just five deliveries. And it means that India needs 69 from 60 balls with all 10 wickets in hand. And Dominic Drake's an expensive first over from him. Reintroduced into the attack. Has a third man in the circle. Couple boundary riders on the offside and three on the own. Nicholas Buran himself positioned in long off. One of the things that we saw run Gavaska is the number of slower balls from the Indian bowlers throughout the course of that innings. When the West Indian batsmen were well set and they were looking to score, they were fed a heavy diet of slower balls into the pitch. We haven't seen much of that from the West Indians. Peace won. Yeah, I think they missed a the trick there, the West Indians, because we saw Hardik Pandya do that quite a bit, and he was very economical. And it's something that you'd want to exploit on this surface, on this pitch. Yeah, and, and Bhuvneshwar Kumar in particular, bowling in both the power play and the death, the proliferation of pace or for deliveries. Let's have a look at how many deliveries below that 130 kph, 62%, and just 38% above. So a significant number of slower balls because he understood what is required at this venue on this surface and used the conditions quite well. Dug through the one side powerfully and gets himself a boundary. Well, he just in fabulous touch, getting his touch back. Shreya Sayar, Surya Kumar Yadav on, on the other hand, at the non strikers end, 66 of 30, strike rate of 200. They're making this look easy. Yeah, and a significant step across the offside because he is looking to target the leg side, shorter side with the wind, Shreyas Ayer. Surya Kumayadav, we've seen some incredulous strokes from him. That one in the previous over of Alzari Joseph, almost Matrix-like, to get under that ball. Okay. Yeah, I heard a noise there. Might just have been bat on the ground. They'll have a, a discussion, the bowler and the wicketkeeper. And I think he's reviewed it. Third on private television director, we have a player review for caught behind. The original decision is not out. I've already checked and established it's a fair delivery. Can you move on to front on, please? Front on coming up. The bat definitely hits the ground. The ball is very close to the bat as well. I'll need ultra edge to confirm if there's an edge. I'll try edge coming up, Nigel. Despite bat hitting the ground, gap between bat and ball, keep rolling. Keep rolling, gap between bat and ball. I'm satisfied there is no bat involved. I'm ready to go back on field to Nigel. Nigel, I'm gonna ask you to stay with your original not out decision. You're on screen, signal now. Uh, decision upheld, not out. Bat 
clearly making contact with the ground, nowhere close to the ball. But Weston is desperate for a wicket. Really need to get one to get themselves back into this contest. In the in command and control. Down the ground, just one bounce. Jason Holder, the man position there, went to him quite quickly. 11 overs gone, 104 without loss. of delight between blue and maroon in there going along quite nicely in this run chase what will be the highest run chase on this venue if they manage to get there Akil Hussein has been really good in the previous two games good again in this one two overs none for 12 operating from the Lozak road end Yeah, for the first time, he's been asked the ball from that end. And the batsman would be perhaps targeting long off or inside out with the win. So he himself would look to bowl that leg stump line. Yeah, straight away targeting straight down the ground. I'm sorry, Akuma Yadav. Well, he's batting on 67 of 36. He's not going to hang around. He's in the zone. He feels he's in the zone. He feels he can hit every ball. Now that's the sort of line and length he'd want to bowl. Well, again, just such a skillful player, Surukumar Yadav. Again, excellent hands to play that shot. That's the beauty of his batting. He's got such skillful hands. Really maneuvers the gap, maneuvers the ball into the gap. Wicket. Exactly what the West Indies needed. Shriya running past that one and that man again. Akil Hussain into the game. Gets the breakthrough. It will be interesting to see if this turns a bit. Dancing down the track. Shreya Sayar. Mr. Lion, he's got to go for 24. It's 105 for one. Rishabh Pant, new batsman for India. Strike rate a little bit on the lower side in T20 internationals. Not what you'd expect or associate with someone of his class and calibre. Skillful from Akil Hussain. The length is what's so important. They're trying to get close to the ball to go straight or inside out, but he's not allowing them to. And it's going to be a different challenge now, bowling to the left-handed punt. He'll be hitting with the wind, shorter side, leg side. And Akil Hussain theoretically turning into him. And so he'll go around the wicket and try to go across. Just giving himself and his team a chance in this defense, Akil Hussain. Oh! 
Yeah, you're right. They've just got a glimmer of hope now. Can that old adage come true? Come true. One brings two. A little bit too wide, but you can see what he's trying to do. Akil Hussein is trying to keep the ball away from Rishabh Pant and try to angle it across him. Anything that's close, he runs the risk of it being dispatched. Yeah, another wide. So conscious of the, the power that this man possesses. It's a tight call. Gets off the mark, Pant. You're just making sure he's got his fielders in the right position, and that's good. It's a small ground. You want to cover the angles. I'm just pulling out at the last moment there. Akilusin, another good over from him. Just the four runs so far, even with two wides. And he picked up that all-important wicket. Can he close the over out? He does close it out. Just a single. No, no, no. Great stuff from Hussein. 12 overs gone. 109 for one. This is where we are at in this third T20 international. India need 56 more from 48 balls, nine wickets in hand. Nicholas Puran has turned to his wicket taking option, Obed McCoy. Robert McCoy picked up that six for 17 yesterday. No wicket so far in this one. Ball is used so far by Nicholas Puran. Not being able to penetrate this Indian batting lineup. Left leg. Yes. Thank you. And then they are cruising. Required it just seven runs and over. Yeah, they've just got to keep their head about themselves now. If they play common sense cricket, they should get home. Yeah, as you said, the required rate just over seven. In T20 cricket in this day and age, shouldn't really be a problem, especially when you've got nine wickets in hand. In the gap, not enough connection to get the boundary. We'll get a couple. Just a reminder as well that this series is locked at one apiece. And this is game three. We have a couple games remaining after this one in Florida. 
over the weekend. Someone will take a 2-1 lead. Yeah, too wide. We'll have to reload that one. Obed McCoy. So much experience in T20 cricket from Rusha Pant has been in the IPL for a long, long time. Part of that Delhi Capital setup, captain of that team, working with Ricky Ponting and absorbing all of that knowledge and experience from a great player. And really a, a phenomenal talent, Rishabh Pant. We've seen what he can do in okay, okay. test match cricket, the way he plays that format. Seen him in one day international. So an all format player and someone who India will have to manage in terms of workload. We've seen lots of players being arrested at different times. A phenomenal talent. A once in a generation player, as far as I'm concerned. I have a look at his test record. I mean, I think he's an all format player. His test record is phenomenal. He's got five or six test hundreds. He's been dismissed five or six times in the 90s. Now, if he had converted those 90s into hundreds, he'd have about 10 test hundreds in about 30 odd test matches. That is just outstanding. Have a look at that 500s and I think he's been dismissed about five times in the 90s in 31 test matches. So 10 hundreds in 31 test matches, outstanding. Yeah, this time it will have the legs to go all the way. Thirteen overs gone, 119 for one. Yeah, 46 from 42. Okay, okay. Run rate required under seven runs and over now. Last okay, ball okay, of the previous okay. over. Very competently deal, dealt with. And Aki Lusain will bowl his final over. Hey. Well, I've got, I've got the world number one, the next world number one in T20 bowling next to me, and I want you to get your bowler's hat on. What areas are you looking to bowl at? At not, not at Surya Kumar rather, but at Rishabh Pant. Yeah, well, I think in the previous over when he just came in. I would have been trying to get him out. That's the only way we can get back into this game if I was out there playing. And to do that, I would have bowled a straighter line and have a slip in position as well. If I bowl my four overs and just go for 20, but I don't pick up an additional wicket, all it does is delays the outcome of the game. So at that point, I would have been surely trying to get a wicket. And that's what I think they should have done. But he went defensive. And now he's given them a free hit. And this is unforgivable as a spinner, particularly as a spinner in T20 cricket and a, a free hit to Rishabh Pant, hitting here. with the wind to the shorter side. Let's see what he does. But it's Christmas come early. Yeah, it was bound to happen. Too easy for Rishabh Pant. As clean as you like. Yeah, just held back in, in his crease, Rishabh Pant saw that it was short. Transfer of weight, played that over long gone. Like you said, Christmas came early. 
Christmas, Diwali, you name it. Rubbing his hands in glee, Rishabh Pant. Yeah, and it's messed up his figures as well, Aki Lusin. I'm sure that is something that you'll be thinking about even now. Why did I give him that free hit? Has to put that behind him and look to finish off this over. Three balls left. Yeah, so just to finish that point, I would have been more in an attack mode to try to get another wicket quickly to get back into the game. This over, I would have been a little bit more defensive because he's faced a few more deliveries. They still have to search for wicket, the West Indians. Two is the call. Did he wait well enough? No, he didn't. Just one. I mentioned yesterday, Rohit Brandon King in that chase. Very well set. And how he would have wanted to be there at the very end. Similar today for Surya Kumar Yadav. 72 from 42. He doesn't want to leave it for anyone else. I'm sure that he's there to the very end. He needs 28 for 100. India needs 36. So that possibility exists. Just a single to end. And to end his spell, Aki Lusin, another good one from him. One for 28 from four. 130 for one. One for 28, Aki Lusin, the only successful bowler for the West Indies. <laughs> Dominic Driggs. <laughs> yeah, they're just walking this now, Rohan. 35, 34 from 35 balls. Too easy. Yeah, they've got just got to use their cricket smarts now. Do nothing silly. Less than run a ball. Two fabulous players out there. Surya Kumar Yadav batting on 72. What a shot. Absolutely brilliant from Surya Kumar Yadav. Gets himself another boundary. Innovation and skill. We're well, 76 now, Surya Kumar Yadav. 24 away from 100. India need 30. He won't be thinking about that, though. He'll be thinking about, I just need to make sure that I take my team to victory. Be there at the end. But this could be the end of him. It is the end of Surya Kumayadav. Disappointment from him. A wicket for Dominic Driggs. Yeah, he'll be disappointed because while it's a shot that he plays quite well, the situation didn't demand the shot. Well, again, he's one of those players who's known as Mr. 360 because of his ability to play shots like that. Unfortunately for him, 
didn't come off this time round. He goes for a fabulous 76. India 135 for two. Adik Pandya, new batsman for India, excellent strike rate, wicket off Surya Kumar Yadav, trying to play that innovative shot, move a fine leg, didn't get it where he wanted, the ball swirled in the air for a while but comfortably pouched. Dominic Driggs came into this game for the West Indies to add another option, left-hand option. Nicholas Puran is expecting much more from his bowlers in this defense. And you saw that score that they got. You thought that could have been challenging. India have batted quite intelligently 30 from 31 so they'll feel that they have this covered no need for panic still have so many wickets in hand as well so very much in a driver's seat Extra bounce from Drake's. Single the result. 15 overs gone. India 136 for two. Ahead India in this run chase. After 15, the West Indies they were 108 for two. India just 29 away from the target. West Indies have struggled to create opportunities for wickets. Azari Joseph on the expensive side. Over 12 runs per over. Being conceded in his uh, three overs so far. Afternoon, Darren Sammy. Afternoon, Darren Ganga. It's not only for West Indies wickets who had to come across, uh, uh, along. West Indies only lost five wickets in their turn at the crease. So yes, today I think there's been a more conservative effort on this pitch, knowing that 160 is a good score. And I don't think West Indies backed up the bowling performance with the line and lens they bowled yesterday today 
A run rate just over nine at the moment, India. And what the very good teams do, they're able to adapt and adjust the conditions quite quickly. I did mention when I was on air with Ron Gavaska that in recent times we've seen this India side bat properly first time up even in alien conditions. That to me is an indication of the depth of their batting, the experience and the skill to assess as they play. Remember, they scored 190 at the Branlara Cricket Academy, batting first in the very first men's T20 international match played there. So none of the Indian players would have had a chance to play at that facility, but still, they got an above par total batting first. And again today, chasing a total we all thought was going to be challenging. The way they've gone about it, it just shows. It shows how they could adapt to different conditions. I think it's important also to note during that phase of the game, India gave the West Indian batters no pace on the ball. Ashdeep, Pandya, Bhuvi, they all changed and mixed the length very well. Whereas you see West Indies, they're putting pace on the ball. Indeed, that was key in terms of slowing that run rate. When the West Indies batted, the West Indies achieved a run rate of 7.5 in the first six and then in the next nine overs, only seven. Usually you expect that there will be acceleration from that first power play into the last five. That didn't happen this time around with the West Indies, although they had wickets in hand. Credit to the Indian bowlers, how they bowled in that phase of the innings. End of the 16th, 140 for two. India dominating by virtue of the application and the skill from their batters. Surya Kumar Yadav in particular, the standout batter in the innings for India, setting the game up. Dominic Drakes into his final over. Still very much a work in progress. Dominic Drakes, the son of the former West Indian all-rounder, Vasper Drakes. Had a chance to play for the West Indies in the recent series against Bangladesh. Did also play in the Vitality Blast for Yorkshire. So still learning his trade across the globe. Man of the match in that CPL final. Gap finding with ease from Rishabh Punt. Just sinks low to get under the ball and picks his spot onside. Nicholas Buran trying to bring fielders inside the circle. Punt eyeing that vacant deep mid wicket. And with the length on offer. Didn't try to hit that one for six. Just tried to place it. That he did very well. That prompts the change in the field. 
mid-wicket goes to deep mid-wicket on the boundary. Fudman comes into the circle. You can't leave that deep backward square region vacant. Scores just about five or six percent of his runs in T20 cricket behind square leg side. That's one aspect of his skill as a batter. And he can also do this. So unconventional in his approach to batting and he's been very effective, Rishabh Pant. And again, pace off, not allowing him to make contact. And that's what I would have loved to see. More of these deliveries, very effective on this surface. I just want to clarify for our viewers that it's not only a slow delivery, it's a delivery where the bowler, as in the case a couple deliveries ago, Dominic Drake's rolling his fingers across the seam, so it allows for a bit of grip from the surface. It's not only pace off the ball, so the ball changes direction, and that's an added challenge for you as a batsman, especially if you're thinking about playing that big shot. Hence the reason why that sort of delivery is so effective in white ball cricket. There again, no pace for Rishabh Pant to work with. And he goes behind square leg side for a single. 148 for two. Dominic Drake's finishing his uh, complement of four overs, one for 33. His first match in this T20 International Series. Azari Joseph as well finished his quarter of overs. Time for Jason Holder. Do you think he want to act? TV that leg side hitting with the breeze, Darren. Such an entertainer, Risha Punt. Has a very natural approach towards playing the game. Is as expressive as ever. They say dancing is an expression of self. Well, for him, cricket is an expression of self. edge and gone that slower delivery a little bit of grip off the surface and it does the trick for the West Indies little too late definitely a much more of these deliveries needed you saw Hadik Pandya himself did it when she was bowling don't think West Indies have assessed that pitch so well, Pandya goes for four, 149 for three.
Deepak Kuda, the one change to this uh, Indian side from the last game, replacing Ravi Jadeja. He's here because uh, Hardik Pandya was swinging under the bounce of this delivery from Jason Holder. Only nicked it through to Devon Thomas. Again, Darren Sami begs the question, why did the West Indian bowlers not adopt this type of approach to their bowling as a collective from the start? I guess it can't just be the captain, it must be the senior bowlers as well, sharing information and directing the younger ones. Was oh, definitely, and you always try to learn from the opposition what they did well when it was their turn to bowl, you get 20 of us to have a look. And you saw Pandya did it, you saw Bhuvi did it, Ashdip. So the template is already there for you. But we just did not apply that. And now, later stage of the game, you see how effective these deliveries can be. Just a single. Brilliant effort at cover. Nicholas Buran, the captain, getting a hand on that uh, strike through the cover region. Just a runner ball needed for India. Again, Jason Holder. One of the senior bowlers in this West Indies lineup. In the gap. A bit of a chase for Shimron Hetmeyer that turns into a jog. That's how well he struck it, Huda. Again, look at the length of this delivery. Face on, full under the bat. I need not tell you the result. Four runs. And as a right hander, Huda will be hitting into the wind. So you should be more straight in terms of your line. Just doing consistent as a collective group, the West Indies. 18 overs gone, 156 for three. Nine more runs required from 12 deliveries. Can't say a foregone conclusion. India still with seven wickets in hand. Obed McCoy brought in for the penultimate over. His last over in his quota. So quite a few learnings for the West Indies in this game. What are those, Darren Sammy? Let's start with the batting. I thought they got themselves in a really good position. But India managed to 
put a chokehold on them after six overs being bowled. They didn't lose wickets during that period, many wickets. I thought that platform they had, they could have gotten to a score of 170. Nicholas Puran batted at three. And he didn't carry on. Ashwin and Co. dotted him up. Just 20 of 23, unlike Nicholas Puran. Whereas you see with India, as soon as the power play was over, they accelerated. So when you have a start like that on a pitch, you know that's going to be difficult. You have to capitalize. And someone had to be the one to say, OK, I'm going to take the, and put the attack back on India. Would you say that West Indies at the halfway stage would have been pleased with that uh, score of 164? Having bowled India out for 138, of course they would have been pleased. But if you look at, if you break down the, the game, the power play, the middle overs and the back end of the inning, you could make a case that during that period where India was just dotting it up, somebody could have shown some more intent with the bat. Because to me it makes no sense scoring 160 for three when you have all these guys in the shade. Also shows how formidable this Indian batting lineup is. Of course, India would have been bowled out in that uh, second T20 international. Maybe they overcooked it a bit, but it was an ultra aggressive approach and that's something that they're grooming into their batting in T20 cricket. And Rich Sharma has pointed that there will be times when they will implode as a batting lineup. Tugged on side. Gets a boundary. Gets another win for India. And it's a record chase here at Warner Park. They've made this run chase look very easy. India, the number one team in T20 internationals. Halfway, 168, 65. West Indies would have fought, yes. We have scored more than power on this surface. India batters, they don't lay flat and die. They bounce back at the West Indies bowlers. The star with the ball in the second T20 international, Obed McCoy going wicketless in this match. Nicholas Puran finding it difficult to pick wickets, only three for the West Indies, allowed India to dominate. Surya Kumar Yadav in particular was supremely brilliant with his stroke play, his ability to take the initiative for his team with the bat. And India with an over to spare, they go on to win by seven wickets. A thought for Rohit Sharma, the captain of India, who had to retire because of back spasms. He's not allowed to continue. There he is. Hopefully, he will be fit and ready for the fourth T20 international match that will take place in Florida. It's been a wonderful display of T20 cricket and batting in particular 
from this Indian side in this run chase. A reminder of how they went. Rohit retiring quite early in the chase. And that prompted Surya Kumar Yadav to take added responsibility. 76 from 44 and some awe-inspiring strokes. Eight fours and four sixes from the right-hander. Sriya Sire partnered him and got 24 and Risha Pant with the finishing touches. 33 from 26 and making light work of the remaining runs. Well, Obed McCoy, the star of the show, did not get a wicket and hence West in his struggle. Dominic Jakes, his first game in the series. And Akil Hussein, always reliable, quite economical. In the end, India 165 for free. So once again, West Indies uh, with a brilliant half century from Kyle Mayers, 73 from 50. They had a very good power play and it was during those middle overs, they struggled to score fluently. They would reflect on that phase and think they could have produced more, maybe get close to that 190 marker would have given them a better chance of winning this game. Bhuvaneshwar Kumar was the pick of the bowlers in my estimation with his skill, his ability to bowl the ball into the wicket, take pace off it, bowl the cutters as well. And they're responding to this uh, score set by the West Indies. Re needed a re record chase, which they achieved. Thanks mainly to Surya Kumar Yadav. Confirmation of that record chase. This game will now be the new benchmark for teams at this venue. West Indies are quite dominant in T20 internationals here at Warner Park. And one special moment in this game will stay with us for a long time. An awe-inspiring stroke from Surya Kumar Yadav. Just standing and delivering with a straight bat and that classy pose. What a brilliant stroke. Flying all the way for six. So as we come to the end of this uh, third T20 International of this tour schedule, India now taking the lead two to one with two games remaining. Those two matches will be in Lauder Hill, Florida. We hope you can join us for that. But for now, we're going to join Samuel Badri for the post-match presentation. Welcome to the end of match presentation of the third T20 International of the Gold Medal T20 Series, powered by Kent Water Purifiers, West Indies versus India. Let me first of all take this opportunity to congratulate India on a seven-wicket win and taking a 2-1 series lead. West Indies, Cricket West Indies would like to thank the official sponsors of the series who have made this possible gold medal title sponsor, Kent Water Purifiers, powered by partner, Betway, CG United, Fan Craze, Mastercard, Blue Water, and the Trinidad Tobago Tourism Authority. I'd also like to take this opportunity to welcome the presenter of the gold medal game changer of the match award, and that award will be presented by Leon Rodney, director of Cricket West Indies and president of the Antigua and Barbuda Cricket Association. And the gold medal game changer of the match award goes to Surya Kumar Yadav. Surya Kumar, if you could make your way here to collect your award. Excellent knock from Sky, 76 from 44, and really set the tone in that run chase. Congratulations to Surya Kumar Yadav. Surya, if you can join me here for a quick chat. It's uh, another T20 half century for you, the fifth, but this was your fastest in only 26 balls. How pleased were you with that? Really happy with the way things went. Uh, I feel when Rohit went inside, there was important. it was important for someone to bat till about 15, 17 overs. And as you said, I just uh, went out and be myself and expressed it. 
And tell us a little bit about the conditions out in the middle in this third game, the second game played in succession here, a little bit slower? Yeah, obviously we saw yesterday what happened uh, in the second inning, so it was really important, uh, as, as I said, to, for someone to bat deep and, uh, and uh, go on and uh, win the game for the team, so that's what I was focusing on. And you've been given an important opportunity. Everyone likes to open the batting in T20 cricket. How much are you enjoying that? Uh, really loved, really loved it because I've done that uh, before in the IPL as well. Uh, so uh, just back myself and enjoyed it. And tell us a little bit about that stroke that you play over the wicket keeper's head, that bending of the back and getting that ball straight back over the keeper. How difficult is that? Uh, I was just holding me, uh, holding myself back at that, that moment. I knew I just had to use some pace during that moment and uh, stretch my innings and really loved it. Congratulations, Surya Kumar. All the best in the remaining matches. Thanks. Cheers. Uh, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the player of the match for this second, this third T20 international. Rather. I'd now like to call for a quick chat, the losing captain, Nicholas Puran, if you can make your way here uh, for a quick chat. Not the result that you would have wanted, Nicholas. Um, where do you feel that it went wrong for you guys? Thank you, Jesus. All praise and thanks. Um, I felt like we, we had to get early wickets and, you know, we didn't get early wickets. I felt like we should have tried to break their back early in power play there, but unfortunately we couldn't get that wicket. So were you then satisfied with that first inning score of 164? Were you expecting that to be enough? Um, we felt at the half, we felt like we had enough. Um, in the bowl well, Ashwin bowl well, Haddock bowl well, they use the pitch really good. Um, the wicket was kind of slow, on the slower side. We, fe we felt that it was a bit difficult to you know, keep scoring on it. But in saying that, we, get, we got 165 and we were really happy. We felt like we were in the game. You know, they scored the runs in you know, the 19th over. But again, if we got early wickets, then it's a different game. Yeah, and that partnership between yourself and Carl is on the back of a good opening partnership of 57, your partnership with 50, but it was a watchful start. You needed to bat like that at that stage, didn't you? When you look at you know the way we bat, obviously we keep losing wickets in the middle over from so seven to twelve. Um, yes, we got a good start. I could have come in there and probably you know continue the momentum, but I felt like it was a bit tough, and I just didn't want to just throw my hand away because I know if I out in that situation, you know, we open the game up for them to get wickets. But it's important for us to get partnerships. Um, you know, we lost the game, but we did a lot of right things in, in terms of you know batting. We didn't lose much wickets today. We got partnerships to 50 run partnership, and that's the thing we want to keep. You know, keep talking about in the dressing room and keep doing out here. You know, unfortunately, that's, you know, it felt like we were 10, 15 runs short, but that's okay. Um, early wickets could have changed this game for us today. Indeed, what a difference that they makes with the ball. Yesterday, you guys were excellent with the ball, not so today. Commiserations on the result. Once again, two more games to go. All the best in that. Thank you. Nicholas Puran, ladies and gentlemen, losing captain for today. And I'd now like to call for a quick chat, the winning captain of game three, Roy Sharma. Roy, if you can make your way here. First of all, Roy, you had to retire hurt. How is the body? No, it's, it's okay at the moment. Uh, we've got a few days in between uh, uh, the next game, so hopefully it should be okay. Yeah, hopefully it should be okay. We want to see you on the park. What was the most pleasing aspect of this win from your point of view? Um, uh, how we bowled in the middle overs, uh, I think that was very, very crucial uh, because they were just about to get that big partnership and uh, with few of their uh, uh, you know experienced players uh, batting in the middle um, and we i thought we used the conditions really well uh, we used our variation pretty well and then how we chased uh, our uh, 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 chased the runs i th i thought it was quite clinical uh, when you're watching it from the outside you feel that you know there was not too much risk there that being taken uh, there's a lot of calmness around uh, so it was quite clinical yeah, I think that's the word clinical, a comprehensive win. And how pleasing was it for you to see Surya Kumayadav actually kick on and get that big half century? Yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, look, uh, it's, it's very important in this format, uh, you know, once you get uh, a start, uh, it's always important to convert that uh, because, you know, it does well for the team. Uh, of course, the 30s, the 40s for uh, any player looks good. Uh, but I think when you get past 70, 80, uh, and then go on to get a 100 as well, uh, you know, uh, you, then you're scoring those runs for the team. And I thought, uh, you know, Surya batted brilliantly, uh, good partnership there with Ayer. Um, and yeah, it was quite quite, quite clinical, like I said, uh, you know, um, when you're chasing a target like that, anything can happen. Uh, it's it's not an easy target. The pitch had something in it for the, for the bowlers. Uh, so we knew that we were up for the chase. Uh, I thought uh, it was important for us to pick the right ball, right shots on the ground like that. And a two, one series lead, two games to go in Florida. All the best in the remaining matches, Ruth. Thank you very much.
Well, we have come to the end of uh, yet another T20 International between these two teams. Two remaining in the five-match series on the weekend. First Saturday, the fourth T20 International of this series will take place in Lauder Hill, Florida. It's a match you won't want to miss because it can be the series decider or an opportunity for the West Indies to level things again. Hope you enjoyed this broadcast here in St. Kitts. And as we move to Florida in the USA, we hope that you will continue to join us for the action. That means that we have to go to the rest of the week. Try to go to the rest of the week.